With the lion's share of the killing done beyond the Bastion, one exalted bloodthirster marches his army deeper into Cathay. As Corn expands towards the mountains, traipsing across desert and past warpstone curiosities, they discover something ravenous. The most powerful and brutal of Corn's warriors, exalted bloodthirsters live only to end lives and harvest skulls. Bloated things rustle the trees, barely contained grunts echo through the hills, and more than one whispered argument finds the bloodthirster's sharp ears. He pulls his army to a halt, ready and eager for a battle to please the god of murder, though perhaps too eager. The minions of Gorn have wandered into the Mountains of Morn, the rightful, hard-earned homeland of the Ogre Kingdoms. The coming conflict between Demon and Ogre may have been avoided if not for the dim-witted instincts of a trigger-happy Nobla. Witnessing the premature firing of the Scrap Launcher rouses the thuggish instincts of the poorly concealed Ogres, who lose all semblance of order and descend upon the demons, largely mistaking them for edible man-things. Scrag the Slaughterer is the insane leader of this rabble, who style themselves the Disciples of the Moor. He drags behind him a massive meat pot and is seldom far from a rabble of gorgers. His followers revere him as the legendary prophet of the Great Moor. It is the exalted bloodthirster's grave misfortune to have ventured so close to these creatures' deity and Scrag's unending delight to have fresh meat for his pot. Noblars are perfect cannon fodder and even better distractions. Some wear saucepans on their heads because safety's important. Alas, there's no saucepan large enough to save something so fragile from a marauding chaos warrior. Noblars litter the ground and corn elates, but not for long. Ogre bulls charge into the fray, pinning the chaos warriors on both sides in a rare display of tactical brilliance. Scrag doesn't remember telling his forces to flank the enemy, and honestly, He's already forgotten it happened. He casts the more because he enjoys the sight of impaled flesh squirming on pointy rocks. On the outskirts of the battle, Mournfang cavalry have been biding their time, waiting for an opportune moment to strike. With the exalted bloodthirster distracted by the giant, the cavalry set their sights on a flagging blood reaper and valiantly charge into battle, only for their prey to be snatched away by a firebelly's flame storm. More cornate forces wade into the conflict. These twisted creatures are harborages of death, beings of pure hatred designed to do but one thing, wage total war. The battle is souring for the more profit. Cornate swords sing with ogre death as the more disciplined of the two armies recovers from the shock of the initial attack. Driven back and on the defensive, Scrag has one last trick up his sleeve. He casts Troll Guts on himself, which does wonders for his own survivability but little to benefit his dwindling army. Scrag's true ace in the hole. A rampaging Stonehorn and a fresh wave of trusty gorgers are more than enough to even the odds. For what Scrag the Slaughterer and his ogre kin lack in tactical prowess, they more than make up for in brute strength and raw power. Their home, as hardy and intimidating as they themselves, may prove to be quite the undertaking for the Demons of Chaos. There is, after all, a reason Cathay and Kislev both venomously avoid venturing too deeply into the Mountains of Morn.